Japanalites, welcome back. It's another Travel Tuesday. So two weeks ago, I bought you a video about working in Japan. Do you remember? You do? That's good then. We talked about what it is they exactly tell you before you go to work in Japan. This time, we are going to switch it and we are going to talk about what they don't tell you. And believe me, it's quite a lot. Work in Japan, what they don't tell you. Do you remember that last time we had to talk about saving up lots of money? You do? That's great. Uh, I managed to save about 1,000 yen. Oh, that's not enough. Uh oh. The reason why? Well, simple. Simple? So during the interview, they will tell you what you will be getting on a monthly basis, which is great. However, that's not necessarily the case when you first kind of start working in Japan. But they told me I'd be getting 250,000 yen. Most companies will expect you to start work one month in advance of your first pay. One month? Then in your first pay packet, you only get a trial rate. A trial rate? Yes, that's right. A trial rate. So it actually, it really does sound pretty standard and I expect a lot of companies in other countries would actually do that kind of thing. However, in my personal experience, I've always been notified in advance of this procedure. There are companies that actually don't tell you anything about a trial rate. So when you get to the company, <gasps> it's a complete surprise. <gasps> I'm completely surprised. Most companies also want you to complete a two month trial before they increase your pay. You're generally told this information when you go in to sign the contract. I'm sorry, first you must really complete the two month trial. The day you sign the contract is the day you officially start your job. You have officially started. The 29 hour contract. You need to be extremely careful with this one. You should really check in advance that you are not going to be on a 29 hour contract. So working the 29 hour contract doesn't sound so bad, does it really? I mean, come on, it's Four and a half days a week plus full-time pay. I mean, that's amazing. Yeah, sure, it's amazing. And it's nice to have all that time off in the world. But working a 29-hour contract also means that the company will not be paying for your health insurance. We only do 29-hour contracts. So, we do not pay your health insurance. If you work over 29 hours, you are actually considered a full-time member of staff. That makes your company responsible for taking out your health insurance and paying for it. Admittedly from your wages, but still. Whereas, if you are on the 29-hour contract, you actually have to be responsible for your own health insurance. It makes the company not necessarily liable for any accidents that you have at work. It also means that it's your responsibility to make your way to the city ward office and take out that health insurance for yourself. It also means that you have to make sure it's paid every single month. It's quite a big responsibility having to make sure that you actually take out your own health insurance and remember to pay it each month. Whereas if you had full-time hours with a particular company, whichever company that may be, um, they will actually make sure it's paid for you, even if it is coming out of your own wages. There are, of course, several different bands of health insurance that you can actually have, and they all cost different amounts. You need to check on your payslip actually which health insurance that you are paying for. If you feel that your health insurance is too expensive, for example, mine's about 12,000 yen, then maybe you can actually ask to have it changed. Pension! Believe it or not, it is actually possible for foreigners to get a pension. 
You see, I didn't say it was all bad. Admittedly, some companies are a little bit reluctant to actually pay out a pension to foreigners, but in my current company, I'm getting a pension. And the best part about that actually is when I quit my job and decide to return to the UK, whenever that might actually be, I can go and collect the documents to say that I have received such and such and such amount for my pension and take it back to the UK and it will get transferred across over there. So, lovely! So when you arrive in Japan, you'll actually be given your alien card or gaijin card. With your alien card, you'll also be given a piece of paper and that actually tells you what you need to do with your alien card. You need to go and register your address on it. Now then, preferably, most companies would like you to do that before you actually start work, but some people may be required to start work straight away. And this is the part that they don't actually tell you when you have the interview. So the place where you go and register your address is actually at the city ward office. And the whole idea of registering the address is a bit like census, you know, UK census. So the alien registration card actually acts as a way of um, counting people in each prefecture. And you're supposed to go and register yourself at the city ward office. However, not all city ward offices open on the weekend. In fact, it's virtually zero. That means if you can't register your address when you first arrive in Japan, you've got to take time off work. And with my experience, that's not always greatly appreciated. Your work is your priority. You should have already registered your alien card. You'll have to take a day off work and not get paid. Or go there in the morning and just be very late to work. Sickness. This one's a bit of a doozy. As far as the Japanese people are concerned, work is priority. There is no work-life balance here. And to them, being sick means you have a raging, raging fever or you are bedridden in hospital. Virtually everything else is not counted as being ill. Where are you? I'm at home. I'm sick. Oh, do you have fever? No. No, I have no fever. I I just caught a cold from too much twerking last night. I'm sorry, but if you don't have fever, you have to come to work. Oh no, I'm just so sick. Please don't make me come to work. Why do I have to come to work? <coughs> Please remember that your work is priority. You'll be literally told to just man up and carry on. Unless you have a stomach bug and you work with children, then you're not safe to come in. So this is where it kind of gets a little bit murky and very smart. So each year you are by standard allocated a certain number of days holiday and a certain number of days sickness. Amazing! <coughs> Wrong! It's far from amazing. In fact, it's the complete opposite. Some companies may require you to go and get a doctor's note and that's hunky-dory, that's great, that's great. That means you can officially take a sick day. The downside of that is if you don't actually go and get yourself a doctor's note, you will lose your monthly bonus. So to be fair, it's probably worth getting that doctor's note. Other companies won't expect you to go and get a doctor's note. They will want you to come into work as soon as you are better. And instead of giving you one of your sick days, they expect you to complete a holiday form and take the day that you were sick as holiday. Can you see why that's a little bit clever and a bit murky? Let's put it like this. You get allocated a certain number of holidays every year and you get allocated a certain number of sick days every year. Every sick day that you actually take gets counted as holiday. So imagine you get allocated, I don't know, um, 15 days holiday per year. Now imagine you had eight days sickness and you had to take eight days off your holiday. 
That's eight days being stuck in bed. So you've taken up eight days of your holiday as being sick. In general, that will mean that you won't actually get the pittance sick pay. You will actually get holiday pay for those days. But it means that you spent eight days bedridden and you can't actually get those eight days back as holiday because the boss ain't gonna give you the sick days back. So essentially, every time you are sick, you are eating down at your holiday and your boss actually gets you for longer. It's a bit like a punishment, I guess. So my advice is find companies that allow you to go and get a doctor's note. Because for the work-life balance, you need those days holiday to actually relax your mind. It's no good taking up your holiday, being stuck in bed, being very poorly. And it's better to use up your sick days for when you are sick and not your holiday for when you are sick. Now speaking of holidays, some companies will give you two days off a week, other companies will give you one day off a week. They generally tell you this, of course, in your interview. What they generally don't talk about in the interview is holiday. Each company has to give you a certain amount of holiday per year. As is in the UK, most companies in Japan expect you to work for six months before you can actually take a holiday. But this is where it differs from the UK and maybe even America and some other countries. Most Japanese companies only expect you to take five days holiday at a time. That is if you are lucky. I've met a lot of Japanese people who only get one day. I have 15 days allocated holiday but I only am allowed to take one day at a time. What I mean by one day is they still get maybe, I don't know, 10 days, but they are only allowed to take one day at a time. Because my work is priority. That's what my boss says. And they wonder why the suicide rate is so high here. One thing you should really do in your interview is actually clarify how many days holiday you are allowed to take at a time. There is of course a plus side. Japan do actually have a lot of national holidays and a lot of companies are actually known to give their workers those holidays off. You are allowed to also take personal days off. Some companies may actually allocate you a certain number of personal days. However, other companies may just expect you to take it as holiday. Again, the personal holidays could be to go and register your new address, move house, go to the doctors, go to the bank, because banks don't open on the weekends here. You know, that kind of thing. There are, of course, hundreds of things that the uh, Japanese companies don't actually tell you. For more information about what those things are, please actually visit my City Cost article. The link is down below. There's quite a lot of things that you would need to know. And that includes buying souvenirs for your co-workers to apologize for taking a holiday. Seriously though, go check it out. Some of this video is of course actually based off of my own opinion. So please, please, please make sure you do lots of research before you come to work here. Working here is not necessarily for the faint-hearted and I have actually met people who have come from Canada, America, um, wherever it is in the world with these big dreams that they're going to work in Japan and they don't last six months. The difference between Japan, America and Canada is it's just the complete opposite. The Japanese do not believe in the work-life priority, they only believe that work is priority. So you need to make sure that working in Japan really is for you. That's it for this week's Travel Tuesday. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, share it and subscribe to my YouTube channel so you don't miss any more amazing videos. Don't forget to check out all of my other pages. I hope you enjoyed this. Don't forget to Japan it forward. Thanks for watching. Until next time. Peace out.